Greetings, I am Emmett, and I am in quarantine. Because, you know, aren't we all? If I'm completely honest, I'm one of the people that can kind of say that life hasn't really changed that much for me, but we still use this as an opportunity to take an extended spring break. I've been spending my time editing and writing for a couple of bigger scale projects that I've been planning and working on for a while. So even though I'm not like cooped up more than I usually am, I have been working on the computer for so long, I am starting to feel like I need to do something. So, taking inspiration from the current events, I thought, why not make me some apocalyptic props? Looking around my workshop, the first thing that I noticed was this toy shotgun that I've had lying around for a while. <laughs> this thing's kind of fun, but I kind of wonder if I could make it look real. <laughs> I don't think there'd be any legal implications to walking around with a realistic shotgun. Of course, that's assuming that I can make it convincing in the first place. Challenge accepted. The next thing I noticed was this respirator I got from my dad's shop. I grabbed this recently because I thought, hey, if he has a respirator, I might as well use it if I'm messing with chemicals like spray paint or glue. And that way I could have it in case I need some apocalyptic gear. But upon further inspection, I realized just how grimy this thing is, and I'm pretty sure it's older than I am. So uh, I don't really want to wear this thing. But that doesn't mean I can't make a replica. So that is the plan. I'm gonna make some sort of gas mask and then I'm gonna modify this shotgun to make it look real. Two tools that are must-haves for any apocalyptic wanderer. So, let's do this. Originally, I was basically just gonna make a customized version of this because I wanted it to be sort of a companion piece to these post-apocalyptic goggles I have. I like those goggles, they're fun. I wore them recently during a uh, family gathering that got a little nuts because we're all bored. And then I put them down somewhere and I forgot where I put them. They're lost. And that saddens me. I can be scatterbrained sometimes. But it doesn't matter too much. I, I kind of feel like making a, a full face mask could be fun. So I'm gonna go for that. To do this, I'm gonna need a head. I could use my own head, but I'd need someone else to help me and I may not be able to breathe for the entire process. So I have this model head. Hopefully I can like make masks and helmets off of this thing and then they'll fit on me, hopefully. I haven't fine tuned the face too much. It's a little bit off, but not as off as this thing, which I made from scratch before that. I kind of like how it turned out. It looks interesting, so I don't really want to destroy it, but it is the wrong shape on like a fundamental level because nothing ever fits and I think like the, I want to say the face is too far forward and the, the head is like too, I don't know. It just, yeah, it doesn't work. But it kind of looks artistic so I keep it around. I don't have too much of a plan for this. I thought about trying to design the, the full mask first before I started making it but then I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and start without a plan, because that way I can just make stuff up as I go. I'm thinking I can put a mask and goggles on this thing, and then pull a pattern off of like the entire face with the mask and goggles on, and hopefully that will give me sort of the, the shape of an actual gas mask. These were goggles that I was starting to make back when I was trying to design an owl-famed superhero. I might revisit that someday, but if I did, I think it, I would go in a different direction. So... Whew. I might use some of these parts for the, the eye pieces of the gas mask. I dropped a lens, where did it go? Anyway, um, these parts are actually uh, from sunglasses that I modified, but these little circular clear lenses I'm planning on using for the, the lenses of the gas mask because I don't know what else I would use. Where did that other lens go? Maybe I should put it on my glasses. That's weird. It's round, I guess it rolled away. I'll find it at some point. I don't specifically need it right now. There, yeah, that looks like a <laughs> Mr. Mr. Apocalypse mannequin. Okay. 
Oh, he's top at me. Okay, so. Uh... So to pull a pattern off of something, you cover it in tin foil and then wrap it in duct tape. Probably don't want to make it too tight because I think this thing is smaller than my head. I'm not too much of an expert when it comes to this type of more fine detailed patterning stuff, but I'm learning. I guess I really only need to put duct tape on one side because that if I just pull the pattern off of one side then that'll mirror over to the other side and they'll be symmetrical so okay now that it's covered in duct tape I can start pulling the pattern off of it this is all about trying to find the best way of gluing the foam together Testing it onto my face, I think the main thing that's still off with this is that the chin needs to be beefed up. It feels a little tight. Anywho, need to cut this apart and get the pattern. Okay, so I've got my patterns out on the cardstock. I'm gonna cut these out and then trace them onto foam. But first, I wanna move over to the shotgun for a while. First thing I did was take off the pump. Everything here needs to be sanded down a little bit so that the plastic can be primed and then painted. I thought about taking like all the pieces off and sanding them individually because that's technically like the better thing to do. And that way I would be able to like get in to here and hey, that moves. And this, this thing was broken when we got it. So I think it was supposed to like be able to eject fake shells or something, but it never has. Um, I took the batteries out so it doesn't make any noise anymore, but I didn't really want to mess any of the wiring up. Since I didn't really know what I was doing with that, I didn't want to like pull it out and then it not work when it went back in. Not that that would be any big a deal, I just kind of like, I like it making noise. It's fun. While I had the stock open, I did put some quick seal in around some of the connector areas to hopefully stop the squeaking. And now it's kind of wiggly. That's that's more wiggly than it was before. Did something not get tightened up? This is why I didn't really want to take it apart any further, because I didn't want to mess anything up. The plastic needs to be scuffed up. And for these wood areas, I was thinking of going over it with the Dremel, with like a really gritty bit and trying to like put some some sort of grain in it. This didn't work out quite as well as I was hoping, but it definitely didn't work out as bad as I feared. The main point of it is just to give the paint some texture to grip and sink into once I get to that point. So once I sand down all this rough stuff and scuff up the rest of the plastic, I think it'll be ready to go. Too much sanding can make my arm tired, so I'm gonna take a little break and go back to the gas mask. Okay, so here I have all of the pieces drawn out onto the foam, and now I need to cut them out with an X-Acto knife. Like that. Okay. Now I just need to remember how it all went together. Normally, the professionals at this sort of thing will draw on like little marks and guidelines so that they know how the pieces fit together. I tried that a couple times when I first started doing this, and I I guess I was too sloppy with the marks, and following them ended up making it look worse than if I just eyeballed it, so I kind of stopped doing that. This is a situation where it's beneficial, because I, I have my pattern to go off of, but it's hard to remember exactly how everything is supposed to line up, but I think... It's sort of like that. Before I get to gluing it all together though, I'm going to warm up all of the pieces with a heat gun and kind of warp them a little bit and that'll make it easier to glue them all together because they'll already be a little bit rounded. In the meantime, I can figure out the modifications that I want to make to this. 
The main thing is that it, it does feel a little bit short, and that's how you can tell that it's a toy, kind of. And just as far as the feel goes, that and it's not heavy, but I don't know, I'm not too worried about dead on accuracy. So one thing that I thought I could do to beef it up is put a pad on the butt. Because sometimes bigger guns do have sort of like a plastic rubber pad kind of sticking out here. I was gonna put on something like that to have it be against the shoulder a little more. Then I figured I'd put on some sort of muzzle or something. I forget, there's a word that I'm thinking of. So yeah, butt pad. Stock pad? Rubber back? I don't know. A muzzle and probably rig up some sort of sight system. That's my plan. So to glue the pieces together, I'm gonna use contact cement. The thing about contact cement is that you need to put it on both pieces, then wait for it to dry partially, and then stick them together. I'm going to proceed very cautiously, piecing together only the parts that I know actually go together. That way, by process of elimination, I should be able to get some of the trickier pieces glued in the right positions, because I already have the main pieces where they need to be. This thing's kind of funny. And a little bit creepy. So right now, this is a little bit flimsy because it's just one layer of craft foam. I don't have much in between this and my floor mat foam, and I didn't want to make it like a really thick and bulbous mask. So I'm just going to build up a lot of layers of craft foam until I like the consistency of it. Oh yeah, while I was gluing stuff together, I glued together a couple of pieces of floor mat foam to be the stock extension pad. I glued them together with the contact cement, then took them out to the shop and grounded or rounded them down with the grinder. It got away from me once and left a little nick. I don't know if you can see it. It's just a, a scratch kind of cutting through part of it. I don't think it's that big of a deal. It'll either just look like battle damage or maybe I can fix it with some quick seal. I'll see when I get there. But since there's more work to do on the mask than the gun, I'll probably focus on it for a little bit. Before I start to like customize it and build up the, the apparatus parts of it, I'm going to bulk up some pieces, go around the, the eyes and the mouth a little more with some foam, probably on the inside glue some foam strips to reinforce the seams. So yeah, just three layers of foam around the mouth, the, the white and then the black on the inside and the green on the outside. And that already feels a lot stiffer and more shaped in my face. <coughs> Probably shouldn't put that on until the <coughs> contact cement fumes go away. <coughs> Before I put more around the eyes, I actually traced out some patterns of the lenses, I was able to find that lens that I dropped. And this is actually how big the eye sockets need to be compared to that. So before I put on the lids, I guess, I'm going to cut this out of foam and then glue that onto the eye so that I can know how big the actual eye socket is going to be so that I can sculpt the rest of the eye based on that. So whenever I get to that point, I have this like really thick tube. I don't know what it was for. It wasn't paper towels, but something of that ilk. Uh, I'm gonna use this as kind of the connecting point. I'm gonna cut holes and stick it through there to connect to the respirator part. But before I do that, I think I'm going to put more foam around the edge, try to beef it up a little bit more, uh, just so that it seals up against my face more than it does now. And that way it will be stronger for when I actually try to attach the straps. Meanwhile, I have this piece of PVC pipe that I'm gonna use as the muzzle. I have a uh, wraparound pattern that has way too many holes, but it's still a guideline that I will use to cut out the shape of 
I don't know what to call it, it's just the, the muzzle. I should probably do this on a vice. So, got the muzzle all drilled out and sharpened. Dad said it was called a flash hider, because, you know, it hides the flash. This thing is very close to being just the right thickness, but it is a little bit wiggly on the barrel here. So to glue it down, I'm gonna use some hot glue. I'm hoping that if I put a bead around it, that'll kind of fill in that gap while gluing it down all in one. Seems pretty solid on there now. While I'm here, I'm also going to glue down this little magazine cap. And while I have the glue gun out, I'm also going to glue some hooks for hook and eyes on the back of here so that I can attach that, but still get to the battery pack if I need to. I have had a lot of trouble in the past with getting hook and eyes to actually stick. One trick I've learned is to go ahead and sew them to a scrap of fabric, because that way the fabric will actually stick to glue. I just hope that the glue will stick to the plastic of the gun, but that's why I have scratched it up a bit, because hopefully that should give some grab to the adhesive. So originally, my plan was to like put a little bit of a strip of foam to fill up that gap. And I still might put something just so that it's not quite so obvious. But actually when I was uh, looking up pictures of like recoil absorbers, they did actually have, some of them anyway, had a gap. So this isn't actually that far off. I did go ahead and add an extra rim of foam around here. And I think that does make it look a little cleaner. Yeah, with that extra rim, I probably will go ahead and fill in this crack and some of the seams with quick seal. So getting back to the mask, I put a lip around the edge of it so that it should kind of press up against my face a little more. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do to strap it onto my head. I still haven't found my elastic. I had some like somewhat heavy duty black elastic that I thought I'd just kind of like put a a triangle of it on so that it would slip over, but I don't know where it is. When I was looking, I did find this leather strip. I think maybe it was part of a saddle at some point. And I, I have several of these little snappy snappers. So I could attach that somewhere and just like click it on behind my head. And this thing actually makes me feel like I should go a little bit more rustic with it. If I'm gonna have kind of a scuzzy leather strap to hold this thing onto my head, I might as well make the whole thing look either old-fashioned or post-apocalyptic. Don't need to figure that out quite yet, though. Right now, I'm gonna start to map out where I want the like, respirator pieces to go. Some designs have this middle section more towards the nose with the, the two larger stems sticking out lower in the cheeks and then some have this like almost at the bottom with these up a little higher and then some designs actually just like like the the really old-fashioned like world war designs just have like the the one big mask then maybe some tubes or something i'm not gonna bother with tubes i thought about it but I want to keep things fairly simple. And when in doubt, I'm going to go ahead and just use this thing as kind of the what I'm going for. Then for the eyes, I want something sturdy. And this was almost the right size. Not too sturdy, though. I'm thinking that I'm actually, since I'm going to have to cut this apart anyway, I'm going to, like, use several strips of this glued together and kind of that'll let me widen it out a little bit, and then that will be the eye sockets that the lens can fit into, and then I can just stick them in there and glue them in. <laughs> it's a some kind of weird telescope eye thingy. I'm 
thinking I'm gonna go ahead and glue in the eyes and mouth, but I might wait on these because I'm going to attach the respirator bits to them, and it might be easier to build them separately and then stick them in there when everything is ready. Next, I'm probably going to build up some foam around some of the holes to smooth that out a little bit. My original plan after that was to skin the entire thing with another layer of foam to try and smooth it out and make it look all like one piece. But I do actually kind of like the look of this part being its own kind of mask section. But I still need to cover it with something because these seams were not meant to be the finished product. So I went ahead and pulled a pattern off of it like this. So next is really just repeating the process of taking the duct tape pattern and turning it into foam. So I put some foam clay in around the eyes and that really seemed to work to fill in those kind of messy looking gaps. I'm really starting to like this stuff. So some random weirdness. It's been springtime here in Kansas, or at least it had been. For a couple weeks it had been growing into the 60s and 70s, temperature wise. And it had been getting pretty nice, I even had to mow the lawn. Which always makes me feel like uh, it's summertime. But then, this happened. I don't know. And now, I'm not going to glue it in yet, I just want to see how it fits. Wow, that is a really snug fit. I guess that's good. So for the mouth, even though I'm not going to try and make it functional, I still want to have it look the part, I want to do what I can. And one idea I had was that on like this mask, there's the little flappery flapper thingy that will, I think, let your breath out, but then will close when you breathe in. So I thought about rigging up something sort of like that on the inside. Okay, so I put a ring around the mouth to widen it a little bit, and I was, I was looking for something that could still sort of look like a filter of some kind. And so like I was thinking some kind of fabric that I could still breathe through. And the first thing that popped out at me was this dead blanket that lost all its fuzzies and has been reduced to just a mesh. Thinking if I cover that a few times like with kind of layers that could look pretty good. And then I have this uh, great, I think I cut this out of a speaker. What? What? Oh, Flopsy wants to say hi. It's a gas mask, Flopsy. Okay, so this is three layers of fabric and then a foam ring and then fabric. And I like the look of that. Now, I'm gonna take this grate and glue it on top of there. Now I'm going to use contact cement to glue some foam over all of that fuzzy stuff. Basically the same process is going to go into the cheek respirators. I'm just going to build up sort of a, just a little pocket of foam and then fill it with that meshy fabric. So 
So I had decided to base it more directly off of this and go with more of a modern approach for the filters, which meant ending up with wider, narrower filters that were a little closer in to the mask. But actually, now that it's here before me, I I kind of really like the, the longer, narrower look. Kind of has a little bit more of like a retro, rustic vibe. So I may try to lean into that. I'm gonna need to actually put the, the filter parts in, just more of this fabric. Probably just kind of stuffed in there. Um, then I'm gonna use these plugs to go like that. But some of this needs to be dremeled and smoothed out a bit first. Okay, so I accidentally messed up a little bit. I meant to glue the mesh on this side because that was going to go inside. But I glued it on this side and now there's all this gummy stuff. But that's gonna be covered up anyway, so it's no real biggie. Okay, so now I'm going to glue these on top of those. Let's see. They're slightly different sizes. I can't remember which one. That one goes for that one. I wasn't sure what exactly I would do for like a, a grate or a vent, but then when I decided to go more old fashioned and I looked up some pictures, some of them had holes. So I decided to do that. Hopefully. Except that isn't for far enough. For that, that isn't very far in. Well, since I started this, I'm gonna go ahead and put holes in them, but I think I have another idea. I went ahead and punched all the holes, but they're mostly for aesthetic reasons, because they're mostly covered up by the, the inner foam. But, I had an idea. I'm going to take an old pencil, pull out the eraser, and then sharpen the metal. Whoop, I just broke it. Hopefully it'll still cut. Now... Aha! Uh -huh. The things you can do with a pencil. Okay. I like it. Time to glue. I finished up some of the filters, put some rims on them, then I put little anchor points for where I'm gonna attach the straps. I reinforced those on the inside because I didn't want the foam to tear. There's still some tweaks that I want to make before I prepare it for painting. There's some things that I want to dremel down a little bit, like around here it's a little, just wanna smooth that out. Then I will go over it with quick seal and try to fill in all the seams and cracks. And that's basically it. It took me a little while to get the seams even. I had to do a lot of quick sealing and sanding to get them where they are now. And they're still not perfect. But I'm not really looking for absolute perfection. It's just a quick project. So just a little more sanding and smoothing out and I think I'm gonna call it good. Meanwhile with the shotgun I have some pipe rings that I'm gonna put on there as sort of a sight system. Have a bigger ring for the back and whoop! And a smaller ring to go up by the, the muzzle. So there it is, they're all made and ready to be painted. But I think that's enough for one video. This has been a fun adventure, but it's taken some time. I wanna be able to go into some details with the painting. I think that'll be pretty fun. So if you thought this was interesting and you want to see if I can paint them to look real, stay tuned.